Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now it's time for our next hot topic. And this one is Reps Consider Law to Regulate Crypto Transactions. Joining us to discuss this is Dominic Rume Uriri. He's a certified blockchain analyst. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Best morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, I like when you say that. Best morning. That is so good. She, he had light. <laughs> so That's why it was so the best morning. Yes. <laughs> he slept well, so it's best morning. Good morning, Roman. Welcome. Okay, so... Yes. Yeah, so we're talking about um, reps to regulate crypto transactions. Um, you know, we, we, we don't really do crypto like that, so we don't have <laughs> so much um, knowledge about this. But we've seen cases whereby... Um, for instance, I think about two weeks ago, we had a conversation with you and we were talking about Binance. Um, we we're talking about all of these um, cryptocurrencies and how they've just helped in you know, increasing the dollar and de um, depreciating the Naira. But with the House of Representatives coming now and considering a law to regulate these crypto transactions, what do you do? What do you think? Do you think this might you know, even help with our, the current state of our currency at the moment? Yes, it would help with the current state of the currency at the moment. You know, um, first and foremost, the bill is a welcome development as long as it is a balanced, fair, and supportive one for the cryptocurrency industry. There is no doubt that a fraction, no matter how small, of the country's FX is currently now being used or being done through digital currency transaction and from the data that have been gathered especially by the house of representatives over 26 billion dollars was moved and you can imagine if the nigerian government had 10 percent of that particular money as tax as it already stated in their security exchange commission or the one or two regulatory policies that they have already put out what it would have done in terms of um, infrastructure development that possibly would have been generating something that we can export out of this country that would end us foreign revenue or foreign currency as well. So, um, by side by side, it's actually something that is a welcome development. However, I should not impose excessive or arbitrary restrictions like the fees we discussed about some time ago when you have over. 500 million for bond, especially for the local cryptocurrency exchange. However, Binance can um, afford it, um, but they should just be positive that this particular situation would actually be one situation that would change the narrative of the cryptocurrency industry in Africa, and they should play it very well so that they will be able to become leaders for others to follow. My first question, Rume, will be, what do you think about the fact that Binance is packing their bags and leaving Nigeria? <laughs> Binance is packing their bags and leaving Nigeria. That is quite a remark. So it's not, this is not a situation of Ghana must go. <laughs> <laughs> because Binance is um, a corporate company and, you know, one thing with corporate companies is that they are ready to always play ball, especially when they have a lot to benefit. You know, now if you look at the data that we have, over in 2020 alone, more than $400 million worth of transactions was done on that particular platform. And as you know, Nigeria is a leading global, is a, is a, is a global leader in, in Bitcoin trade. And because Nigerians have showed that they embrace crypto as an alternative source of traditional financial system. It is something that a, a forward-thinking company would actually do a balanced negotiation to see that they can continue their operations in Nigeria. It will not be wise, business-wise, for them to their bags and leave Nigeria. So I think the um, Although they are scared right now to bring more of their executives to Nigeria because two of their executives are currently detained to be able to have that negotiations and smoothing it out. My friend, which is um, Senator in here, is currently the lead, the, the one representing Binance here for this particular case. And I was watching their court session yesterday and he was actually saying that the Binance people, they said the, they are looking at a way to they sent a memo and a response to be able to speak to the Nigerians. It is, however, 
unconfirmed whether the two people that were arrested by the National Security Agency were from uh, uh, came from Binance to solve this situation. It has not been confirmed yet, but I think Binance is not yet ready to pack their bags and go. Yeah, but that is a story we, we heard that they are, they are advising their people to change their Naira into cryptocurrency or something, and uh, they are stopping their, their operations in Naira and are leaving the country, maybe because of that fear or not. But if they do leave the country, is it they who will lose more or Nigeria will lose more? Because, you know, they are a very big player in that industry, and now if they leave, for me, it's sending red flags to the other people who might want to invest in Nigeria or do uh, um, cryptocurrency or any kind of business in Nigeria. I don't know. But you're saying that they have a lot to lose. Do you think they will lose more than Nigeria will lose? It's a two-way thing because when you look at it from a business, well, let's look at it from a business perspective. Um, I want to look at it from, as a company, Vorem, which also operates in the um, digital currency space you see that what this does for the nigerian indigenous companies is that it actually kills the competitor if you do a spot analysis our biggest competitor binance has just been removed from the market so it gives nigerians and the nigerian startup much more strength to be able to thrive and do business with nigerians that will also increase the revenue that the nigerian companies are making because i mean instead of all of the traders to go on binance to be able to do their perform their pay to pay transactions it then means that you now have companies that are indigenous companies that they would rather turn to to be able to learn from do this transaction from i i know binance has an academy which as a youth now let me speak from the perspective of the youth it helps to be able to drive the understanding of these digital technologies innovation foster creativity also gives them one or two access to be able to end digital currencies um the over the last few days or the last few weeks we've seen a lot of nigerians use vpn virtual private networks to be able to access these same platforms too that have been restricted with ip addresses i mean these are things that happen in china when you restrict things in china people use ip addresses when you restrict things in u.s people use um, vpns to be able to assess it so nigerians will always find a way to be able to create what an opportunity for themselves however to a large extent right now for the businesses that are operating with crypto in nigeria their biggest competitor has just been um they just shook their biggest competitor and it's better for their business. Mm, that's okay. nice. I didn't see that perspective before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Okay, anyways, um, speaking on Binance now, so there's an allegation against them by the government who is demanding um, almost $10 billion in compensation from the firm. And um, the allegation is the manipulation of foreign exchange rates, um, which has negatively affected the value of the Naira. Do you think this is true? Do you think this statement or this allegation by the government to Binance is true? Do you think they've, you know, just manipulated the foreign exchange currency? And right now it has devalued our own currency? There are a couple of factors that have made our currencies to be devalued. One of them is inflation, a weak currency, and low foreign direct investment. Like this fine that has been slammed on Binance, the only way it can help us on the long run is that if that particular money that is paid is actually invested into infrastructure that would now be producing Maybe, maybe that infrastructure is exporting goods out of this country that is producing FX into this country back as well. Although it, we have $10 billion is good, if it goes into our treasury, of course, we have some more. However, I want to be able to put that um, asset to be able to generate more income for us so that it can actually multiply itself so that that 10 billion becomes a hundred billion and much more. So in that case, um, you would not say Binance has truly affected our currency to the point where it is of, as of today in terms of devaluing it. Because of these other factors that have contributed, it is the major reason why our currency is at this point in time. However, when you have um, 
a platform that is much more accessible. The, the, the world is digital. You are, people are watching us trade digital device on their screen right now. So unlike the bank, it's not as digitally accessible as the Binance platform. It's not as digital. I think there was a time we had issues too with the bokeh effect. It is not as digitally accessible as a bokeh effect too, like the, the banks. So people prefer to use the rates now that they can. Before you can get the rate from bank this money, you call one of your banker friend, maybe you go to bank and queue and all of those things before you can get the correct rate from the bank. But on those platforms, you can just put the link on your phone and instantly you have an idea of the range of dollar rate for that day and you are comfortable to transact within that range so that has been the online um the online discrepancy or the online disparity with what the traditional uh, financial institution has had is what has actually made the currency fluctuation to be the way it is and i think the largest and this would help to put a little bit of check on it. Okay. At least for, for the short term. Before we let you uh, leave the breakfast table <laughs> <laughs> and maybe go actually have breakfast, I uh, would like uh, <laughs> would like to ask you this, uh, maybe a final question. Um, what would you like to see in the regulation that is being muted by or is being uh, mulled by the National Assembly? What are some of the provisions you think should be in that regulation? that will make uh, the market or the cryptocurrency market in Nigeria flourish the way it should flourish? Like a low entry point for startup. A low entry point for startup. Because currently, you, okay, it's like most Nigerian, let's take the average Nigerian business. You are, fas you are a fashion designer, you are a maybe you have um other type of business tomato grocery type of business some of them you on you see that the average nigerian is, does not have this uh, business registered a lot of nigerians they don't have their business registered with the corporate affairs commission why because there is a, a fee that you all there are a bit of ignorance too about it or a fee that needs to be paid for you to get that and the fee is as small as maybe 20 or forty thousand naira. there now that poses a challenge to even normal businesses so the the entry point for this especially with what we have in the current um, policy is too high for the nigerian startup business so it is stifling innovation it is stifling innovation because um when these policies are not in place it exposes nigerians to cyber crimes scams hacks volatility that's without proper regulation and oversight and these um, companies are not registered but if the entry point is low these companies will be registered and they would have the fear too of just scamming their investors especially in nigeria so a low entry point would be something that should be considered very very fast okay all right i think we should wrap it up i there. think we should wrap <laughs> <laughs> i want to say thank you for joining us <laughs> thank you so much Rumi. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So that we can become like a server, a server to, you know, a server to right now. They are currently up in profits with over, I think, $116 million worth of profit because, you know, they were buying Bitcoin when Bitcoin was low, even as of $19,000 at wow. the country. I thought, I said something once that Nigeria is blessed to have citizens that are interested in Bitcoin first. It's not the government that is pushing their citizens or trying to ensure that their citizens, they drive the interests of their citizens. The citizens are naturally interested in innovation, in technology and cryptocurrency. And that would actually 10x our growth rate in the digital transformation space. All right. Thank you so much. Um, hopefully Nigeria can also play in that space as well. Um, and I think it would be great for um, a Nigerian owned startups to, you know, compete with companies like Binance yeah. all around the world. You, you um, consider it and, and, and I enter into just, the crisp. I, I, I wish I was an, I I'll was a, an architect. I've been doing my notes. <laughs> my, my Naira notes. You know, I wish I, I was a blockchain <laughs> architect like my namesake here, Rume. Uh, Anyways, thank you, Rume, for coming. Thank you so coming. much, Rume, for being a part of our program today.
All right, I'm Thank grateful. You. All, right. All right, Dominic Rome Uriere is a certified blockchain architect and metaverse expert. And we've just been talking about reps, um, you know, moving to regulate cryptocurrencies cryptocurrency transactions in Nigeria. And that is where we wrap it up on the mm -hmm. show today. Mm -hmm. It's been a, you know, a wonderful time having breakfast with everyone who has joined <laughs> us. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chef Rume, thank you for being here as well. You know, it was, I have to it was you. nice I serving. I haven't thanked you for a long time. Thank you for being here as You're well. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay. Right. Okay, that's uh, well, how we draw the curtain. We hope to uh, meet again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rume Paulson. Have an amazing day. Thank you.